Hey everyone, hi everyone, and coach and Hoka Athletes, Sage Candy here with another Training Talk Tuesday, uh, episode number 62, I believe. We're going to dive into your top voted question, good question on training equivalents and pacing uh, with goal race paces in mind at a standard distance like a half marathon. But then I'm going to talk about the ideal gradient, the ideal percentage uphill grade that I think all runners of any service, any distance should train on and why. So a uh, great question here. This is the Training Talk question from last week, a uh, race pacing question for Training Talk Thursday. I've always been fearful of the estimated pace for an event. I focus on half marathon, and as I get close to an event, I see an estimated race pace, and I realize running an even pace or slightly negative pace is supposed to be the fastest. That's true. But when I uh, get XXX estimated pace, I think, oh, that's too fast. In my last race a couple of weeks ago, uh, the estimated race pace was 10.15. I'm 62 years old with only running in the last five years. Uh, that's a great pace. And I thought that uh, that was too fast. So I went with a 10.30, picking up the pace as I went, ended up with the last mile in 9.34. Good negative split there, speeding up. Uh, and 10K in an hour and 10.07 overall, sixth in the age group. Congratulations. Uh, that's really good. I think I could have run a faster pace with a less uh, negative split, but I hate blowing up. How do you get to the point of trusting the estimates? I uh, love the channel. Thanks for your support there. Congratulations on your race. Uh, you know, ideally, you, you could speed up at the end and kick it in and finish well. And, you know, that's a great way to, to run compared to the other way of slowing down drastically, uh, which is more common. Um, and, you know, the it comes with experience. It comes with race experience, knowing your body and keying in on your workouts and not just necessarily relying on an estimated chart table, be it Jack Daniels distance running formula, V dot tables, equivalent values, they may or may not be accurate for you. Your watch may or may not accurately estimate your VO2 max and, and your uh, additional race performances, especially if you don't specifically train for the event. So I said in my last talk, you know, you could run a fast 5k time. Does that mean you're going to run the equivalents in a marathon? Probably not, unless you specifically train for the marathon for a long time and reach your full potential there. And even then, you still need to have natural ability for a long distance race like a marathon. Uh, marathon and 5K are quite different, even though they're both mainly aerobic based events. Now, 10K half marathon, um, you, it sounds like you've been pacing it really well, uh, placing on well your age group, but a big negative split means you probably could have gone out a little faster and ideally run a faster time. And until you experience that edge, uh, which could be a real sharp edge in a marathon or ultra marathon, it's hard to say. You don't want to sell yourself short. You don't want to limit yourself. But uh, through workouts, I key in for certain things. So for example, half marathon pace for a lot of people, unless you're running under 60 minutes for a half marathon, super elite time, uh, it's going to be slightly slower than your tempo run pace. But it's probably going to be, uh, it's, and it's going to be slower than 10K pace, but your tempo run pace might be closer to your 10K pace. So in a workout, say like a 20 minute tempo run, you measure your heart rate, measure your effort, like, okay, I can't hold this for a full half marathon, but I could hold this for a, at least a 10K, right? Uh, you know your tempo threshold pace. And that, that changes over time as you get more fit, it should get faster over the weeks and weeks and months and months that you train or you develop more experience reading your body. Same thing with 5K pace. If you're doing VO2 max intervals like 800 meter repeats or kilometer repeats on a track uh, with a short rest, that starts getting pretty good at estimating 5K potential if you do the workouts as a true VO2 max workout on a flat track in good conditions. But, uh, you know, it's still a moving target. And in the marathons and ultras, and especially in trail races, it gets really hard. Uh, even pros don't know how to pace UTMB perfectly because um, it's always changing, right? And in a long distance race, if you run out of glycogen, you hit the wall, uh, you know, you you could be walking or stopping, uh, laying down on the trail. So it could be catastrophic if you go too fast, but you do have to learn. And another thing is evaluate yourself with shorter race performances. So if I'm training for a sub three hour marathon, Boston qualifying marathon time, I know I can't get there until my half marathon is at least under 130 and ideally maximized to being under 125 or 124. Then you're looking at say, okay, maybe if my, my half marathon time is 124, then maybe theoretically I could put two 129s, 130 back to back and run a sub three hour marathon. And that kind of scales up uh, from there with different time ranges. So uh, it does depend on experience level and it comes with the territory with training and figuring things out and being able to make snap uh, decisions, smart decisions, smart pacing on race day, because 
even with GPS watches and mile splits or kilometer splits in a race, you still might go out too fast with the adrenaline. So it's a double-edged sword, but it definitely gets better. And it sounds like you've been doing a great job. All right, second part of the talk. What is the ideal grade to train at for all runners? Any service, any distance, kind of a clickbaity title there. But, you know, it's a great thing to get in hill training. And as I think Frank Shorter said, and a lot of runners and coaches have probably said over the years is, Hills are speed training in disguise. And even when I was training in high school for the 1500 meters and the 5K and 3K on the track, flat road running or track running and cross country uh, in school, we were doing high intensity, short hill repeats. Uh, and then through my years of doing road marathons, Boston Marathon, New York Marathon, Hilly Marathon courses, uh, do hill training. It's good strength work for a flat runner. It's definitely, it's essential work for a mountain ultra trail runner, right? You might be going up really steep hills, but the ideal grade that I found that works for all abilities, any service, any distance is the 5% grade, 5%. And it's a rise over run. So every hundred feet or have every hundred meters of horizontal, you're talking about five feet or five meters of vertical gain, right? It's a slope equation. And a lot of roads in the US, a lot of highways, they kind of limit a lot of the mainstream roads to about 5% grade. And if you run a lot of hilly marathon courses like the Boston Marathon, you think like the Newton Hills, Heartbreak Hill and, and all those Newton Hills, a lot of them are around four or 5% grade only. They might kick up to six or 7% grade a little bit, but you know, four or 5% grade, it's a significant enough hill that it's gonna really slow you down and you're gonna feel it, but it's usually not so steep that you have to power hike, uh, unless you're really tired um, or you're doing a really long distance, right? So for most runners, it's a runnable grade still. And that's really key is that if you're doing short high intensity hill repeats, like one minute, two minute, three minute, uh, high intensity hill repeats with adequate rest, you could actually run it. Uh, even if you're a more beginner runner or your pace isn't super fast like an elite, uh, elites sometimes could go a little bit steeper and obviously if you're training for a mountain ultra trail race you probably want to practice power hiking at like 20 percent grade and on trails and technical stuff and up mountains but the five percent is real key and i just did a workout 20 minute up tempo run on the treadmill today at that grade i do a lot of easy climbing i call it at that grade it, it is steep and it's a good kicker of a grade especially if you're doing something longer but for short hill repeats the high density stuff Hills are always great because they build specific musculature in terms of ironing out your form. You get a better knee lift, you get better ankle flexion, you're springing off your calves more, you're using your leg muscles really hard, stimulating those fast twitch muscle fibers. And if you're doing high intensity stuff, you could actually run pretty fast for short periods of time, uh, better arm swing as well. Um, so it builds running economy or your efficiency that could translate to fast flat speed, but it also gets you calloused and ready for the Newton Hills or for the New York City Marathon, the Queensboro Bridge, Brooklyn Bridge, uh, Veranzano Narrows Bridge. It's been a while since I've run New York. Uh, but yeah, those hills are important to train for, for all runners, 5K to marathon, ultra marathon. Uh, and the, the real kicker and the final key is you could get some good high intensity heart rate spikes up approaching VO2 max, or at least over your, your tempo lactate threshold, um, without the skeletal muscular damage. You have less impact force because you're running quite a bit slower uh, and you're running up a hill. So even if you're doing it on a treadmill, you're doing it on a bridge, you're doing it in a parking garage or a local hill, local trail, anything you could find, short high intensity hill repeats. If you're managing the rest, walk down recovery, several minute rest, you could keep the lactate levels low. You could keep it mainly aerobic based and in check. It doesn't have to be a super hard killer workout where you're puking at the top of the hill. Uh, you could save that for later, especially if you're like an 800 meter runner. But uh, the idea that you're ironing out your form, you're stimulating the fast twitch muscle fibers, you're working on your musculature, but you're also working on your heart and lung efficiency, nice heart rate spikes, nice breathing spikes, improves running economy. It's improving your aerobic efficiency at the same time as improving your running form and musculature. So it is something you want to ease into. You can strain an Achilles, strain a calf, pull a hammy. Uh, you definitely don't want to do that. But compared to like flying sprints of 200 meters on a flat track, you don't have to run as fast because you're running up the hill. You're working really hard though. Uh, it's a great workout and it, it's all part of a mixed, well-balanced training plan after you've built a good aerobic base. So that's really the key, 5% grade hills. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've experienced different grade hills and how you found it uh, to be. But we're talking about, you know, short high intensity hill repeats usually, hill strides it could even be, 
Uh, could be an all uphill tempo run. We have that in our training plans at higherrunning.com. That is a business plug. Final business plug, Sandy and I released a new podcast, the Higher Running Podcast. We have an episode up. You could stream it on Spotify, but also on our website. I'll link to it below. Uh, we talk about variable running economy as well as diving into some scientific studies really in depth with UTMB and velocity at VO2 max and all that good stuff. So thank you so much for subscribing on here, checking out our training plans at highrunning.com. That's any service, any distance. Shout out to title sponsor Hoka, keeping the dream alive, as well as all you Patreon supporters, keeping this YouTube channel alive. Hope you're doing well uh, and stay tuned for more VO2 max productions.